In this video, we're talking about RAM, random access memory. What is it used for? How much do you need? And this is all surrounding the creative professional industries, such as graphic design, video editing, 3D animation, architecture, so on and so forth. Let's dive in right now. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser, and you're watching Don't Tech With Me, the place where you can get your latest tech news, as well as tech terms explained. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Let's dive into RAM right now. And today we're talking about random access memory. What is random access memory inside of your computer or your laptop? Well, basically it's the computer's short term memory. So RAM stores all the information your system needs at one moment in order to execute the functions you call upon. So for instance, that could be searching for something online or opening up Photoshop. Uh, and making some edits or listening to music in Spotify or iTunes and more. So it's what the system uses to go ahead and pursue the tasks you have. It's the memory. It's the way in which the system has the energy and the mental space to do the tasks you're asking it to accomplish. Rather than you Rather than the CPU digging around your storage drive, so that is your hard drive, your, your solid state hard drive, your hard disk drive, your M, M.2, whatever you're using to store files on your computer. So whether, rather than it, the CPU digging around that storage drive to find the information it needs, critical information for running programs is stored on the RAM for faster access. Um, will information be stored on RAM? That's, that's a big question that people have. You know, when people go to sell their computer, do they need to flush more than their hard drive? Do they need to erase the information on their RAM memory? No. RAM only contains information when your system is running. As soon as your system is shut down, the information is gone. One quick RAM memory caveat. So I get a lot of people on the channel uh, talking about, you know, technical terms, and sometimes people know even more than I do. It's just there's a lot of information out there. And I, for a while, I kept saying RAM memory. Don't say RAM memory. Technical people will get really upset at you because it, in the word is memory, random access memory. So if you're talking about RAM, say RAM or just say memory. Um, it's a big difference between the storage in your hard drive and memory. So memory is your system's memory of the information it needs to run the specific programs inside of your computer. Storage is where all your files and programs are stored. So there's a bit of a difference there. All right, let's jump back in. So how to choose the right size. So that's one big thing is there's a lot of different sizes of RAM. As you see up here on the top, we have a big RAM, uh, RAM stick for say something like a desktop computer. And then you come all the way down here and you have this really small RAM card. So what which one do you pick? Well, if you're using a desktop computer, you're gonna use something called DIMM RAM. So that's about 4.5 to 5 inches long, and that fits inside of a desktop computer. Now you want to check the specs on your motherboard um, in order to know which RAM you should purchase. Then you come all the way down here to the so dim, and this is going to be the one that you'll find in almost every single laptop on the market. It's about 2.5 to 3 inches long, and this is the one you want to be looking for. Now, how do you find out your specific computer? What is supposed to fit in your specific computer? Well, I would recommend going to Google and simply asking Google, RAM size for Lenovo Legion Y540. That's the example I'm using here. So it's saying that you want to do DDR, DDR4, you want to be around 266 megahertz, and you want a so dim memory type. All right, so it's very easy to find this information for most laptops. All right, next we go to Amazon. We want to find our product listing on Amazon. How do we make sure we find the right RAM on Amazon or Best Buy, whatever? I'm just using Amazon as an example. So as you see here, I have the SoDim, but this is a DDR3. So that's one thing you want to pay attention to. Remember, in our Google search, they want DDR4 in the Lenovo Legion Y540. And as you see, 1600 megahertz whereas they wanted the 2600 megahertz. All right, so let's go and let's switch over to 2666 megahertz. And that immediately switches us to the DDR4 that the system is supposed to run on. So there we go, we're good to go. So if you were gonna get an upgrade to 16 gigs of RAM for your laptop, this would be the purchase for you if you had the Lenovo Legion Y540. 
All right, so how much RAM do creators need? That's another big question that we come across a lot on the channel. People want to know how much RAM memory for specific tasks like Photoshop or video editing or graphic design or architecture. So let's take a look here at some recommendations I have uh, on how much RAM memory you should be using. So for graphic design, anywhere from 8 to 16 is a really good uh, position to be in. 8 is on the lower end, and it, you might use that up faster than you anticipate, and I'll show you why with some tests here in a minute. Video editing, 16 gigs of RAM to 32 gigs of RAM. I think that's a very, very good amount. I have 32 personally, um, but you'll see as I do these tests in a moment that 16 may not be enough for most people uh, when we start actually putting our system into heavy use. 3D animation, same thing, 16 to 32. Photo editing, you should be good with 8 to 16 gigs of RAM. Music production, same thing, 8 to 16. And illustration, 8 to 16. All right. Now, what we want to do is run some tests real quick. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to X out of this. And I'm going to start firing up some systems on the computer here. I'm going to open up some programs. So I have my uh, task manager open. And you can see Google Chrome's using about 3 gigs of RAM memory. Now, the reason being is I have a lot of tabs open here. So I've got a lot of articles I'm writing and things I'm working on. And so that's pulling almost 3 gigs of RAM alone. So that's why I always tell people if you want to save RAM and you want to be able to use a computer for Photoshop with like say 8 gigs of RAM, close out everything and just run Photoshop. That will improve your RAM memory and give you better performance. All right. Now we see Spotify is running only about 273 megabytes, not a whole lot. And then VMix, this is the software I use to run my live stream that you're watching or the, the screen sharing that I'm running right now and it uses about a half a gig. All right, let's start up Premiere Pro, and let's see how much RAM we start using as we open up Premiere Pro. All right, so as soon as I open up Premiere Pro, you can see that I'm using two, almost two gigs of RAM and almost two and a half gigs in Google Chrome, plus all of these different background tasks that my computer is constantly using RAM for in order to make sure my computer operates in a normal basis. So alone, we're already using 14 gigs of RAM to do this. Now, let's go ahead and let's roll the timeline. And let's see what happens. So system memory slowly climbs again. And this is why I tell people, like, if you're video editing and you want to do anything else but video edit it, you really should have at least 16 gigs of RAM because it pulls so much RAM so quickly. So let's see how much the Adobe's using it now. Okay, so almost three gigs alone. Okay, so including Affinity Photo being open, we just broke 16 gigs of RAM. So if you want to run multiple programs at the same time or you want to do video editing, I definitely recommend the 16 gigs of RAM. All right, we're going to close some of this out because it is really a lot for trying to record video and run all these programs at the same time. All right, now let's talk about some RAM tech terms. DDR4, that is simply the RAM generation classification. So uh, like having the 2015 model or the 2017 model, except they don't change year over year. So whenever they come out with that new edition, it's going to stay that way for a little while. We've had DDR4 for quite a few years now, so I'm not sure when DDR5 is going to come along, um, but that's a RAM generation classification. Next, 2,666 megahertz. That is the speed of the RAM. More speed will give you faster response times. This may not make the overall running performance faster, but it will speed up the time it takes to fetch and open certain commands, like opening a Photoshop file, for instance. I'll talk more in depth about the speed of RAM and if that makes a difference and the importance of it overall more in depth in another video. Dual channel versus single channel. So the amount of memory slots on your laptop or desktop computer. So dual channel would be 8 gigs of RAM, times two would equal 16 gigs of RAM in a laptop or a desktop computer. Now that can be faster than a single channel of RAM at 16 gigs in one channel equaling 16 gigs. Many people encourage the same memory speed in dual channel setups um, so you don't run into complications. Um, now as a whole, like I said, the dual memory channel is going to be faster than the single channel. Okay, do you need to know more? Not necessarily, but if you want, I will cover the following topics in other videos and more. We're going to talk about RAM speed. So 2,666 2, megahertz. Is that a good speed or should you get 3,000? Or do you only need 16, you know, 100? How much do you need? 
uh, GDR4, more in depth on what that means and if we're going to be seeing the new edition coming out soon. So dim. What is so dim and more in depth, as well as dual channel versus single channel. So all that coming up on future episodes of Don't Tech With Me. This has gone on long enough. I thank you so much for tuning in. If this has brought you some value, definitely hit that like button. And if you really want to hang on for more videos, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future ones. I'm Benji Kaiser. You've been watching Don't Tech With Me, and I'll see you here on the next episode.